It's already the third round of the World Cup in Baku and every day is getting better and better. We have seen already brilliant peace sacrifices, mating attacks and now the matchups are getting more interesting as well as we are going to have a look at the game between Peter Swidler, multiple Russian champion and former World Cup winner and also once a finalist, he won the event in 2011 managed to reach the final in 2015. He is an incredibly strong player and he loves this format, uh, obviously. And he's playing against Jordan van Forest, my fellow countryman. He's playing with the black pieces and Swidler opens the game with one E4. We get to see a very sharp game, so you will not be disappointed. And just to make sure to subscribe to the channel, I'm really appreciating all the support so far and I'm sure we are getting the thousand subscribers. But let's have a look now. It's a Sicilian. Knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, the open variation. And after knight f6, knight c3, black plays a6, the Nidorf. And Swidler goes for one of the sharpest lines. The uh, move bishop g5 was really popular in the 80s, but still, it's one of the uh, most uh, serious tests to, uh, to this opening variation. Putting pressure on the knight, black goes for the move e6. And now by far, the main move here is to play the move f2, f4. But there is a lot of theory there. And in the, understandably, Swidler doesn't want to uh, test the knowledge of his opponent and goes for a uh, very interesting sideline, the move queen e2. If you're a beginner, you would think this is looking really bizarre in the sense that you bring out your queen uh, and you're obstructing your bishop. This bishop from f1 cannot be developed, but the idea is to castle queenside as quickly as possible, keeping the d-file open for the rook. So who knows if black is careless, there are possible strikes in the center with a move e4, e5. That's the idea. It's a sideline, not a refutation. Black played here, bishop e7, and now you got to be very precise as white, because if you continue with that plan of castling queenside, then black has a little trick to simplify the position with the move knight takes e4. So the idea is that if white takes on e4, there is bishop takes g5 and the queen protects the bishop, black wins the pawn. Now, relatively the best option for white is to take on e7, capturing a piece, attacking the queen, and now black has the intermediate move, knight takes c3. Bishop takes d8, knight takes e2 with check. Now you can still take back with your knight and after king takes d8, you can avoid the loss of a pawn by taking the pawn on d6. But this is obviously not what you had in mind with queens being exchanged, black is more than comfortable here. So castling queenside has been postponed and instead the main idea of white here is to protect the bishop with the move h4. And this is a very aggressive pawn move. Later on, this pawn can come forward. And there are some additional ideas as, uh, as well. Black has different options. And it's worth mentioning that in an earlier game played uh, online on chess.com, earlier this year, uh, Swidler faced here the move b7, b5. I think it's one of the critical moves, but definitely he used that blitz game to uh, try out some new opening variations. Now, Jordan instead goes for the move h6. Questioning the bishop. The bishop has different squares to go to. You would think maybe bishop e3 is a logical retreat. But after b5, black is intending to go b4, chase the knight away. So you put pressure against the pawn on e4. And therefore the bishop on e3 is not well placed. Instead, Swidler drops back with the bishop to d2. So that the queen also stays in touch with the pawn on, um, on e4. This is not a way to fight for an opening advantage, but just to get a playable, sharp Sicilian game. And that's what we get to see. I think here again, b5 would be a very logical move when uh, you don't want to witness uh, black expanding with the move b4. So a3 would be played in that case. But Jordan goes for queen b6. Also interesting, putting pressure on both the two unprotected pieces in uh, white's position. And white drops back with a knight to b3. And in fact, the queen is not doing that well on, uh, on b6. Later on, it will go away to prepare the move uh, b7, b5. But if you move the queen now to c7, white is actually quite fast with the move g4. And having played this move h6, white has a hook and later on can use it to, uh, to prepare g4, g5. Black doesn't want to see such an attack and anticipates it by playing the move h6, h5. 
trying to gain control over that square. And White, in my opinion, should try to be really fast. I think F3 with the idea to go G4 is really critical. Both sides made some inaccurate decisions, very logical moves instead. Swidler castled queenside, the move we expected. And uh, now the most precise here for black is bringing the knight into d7 so that after f3 you can land with your knight on e5, controlling that square with three pieces. And it will be very hard for white to get an offensive uh, going on that uh, side on the, on the board. So black instead played here queen c7, preparing to uh, launch the b-pawn. But... White could have played f3 again. Instead, Swidler had a different idea. He goes for the move rook h3, original concept, so that the rook is activated along the third rank, can join the attack somehow, can also be centralized or swing over to the queen side to help out uh, there. It's a very typical move in a lot of uh, Sicilian uh, positions. Black played here the move knight bd7. And instead of going for a pawn attack, Swidler places his rook on g3, attacking the pawn on, uh, on g7. And how are you going to cope with that? Big question. If you would castle here, well, I think bishop h6 is a very unpleasant move to, uh, to face with, uh, with a lot of pressure here. Maybe knight g4 is possible, but ideas like rook takes g4, h takes g4, queen takes g4, you get excellent compensation for the exchange. You have one pawn and an attack. This looks quite uh, quite nice for white. Another possibility is just to ignore the threat here with a move like uh, b5. This is uh, very interesting. It was not played and uh, white can always play the move a3 to uh, stop the march of the b-pawn. If you would take on b7, I think b4 is very unpleasant. And where's the knight going? If it goes to a4, it can easily get trapped with the move queen c6. So you got to be careful. Maybe you better go back to b1. But now things are going from bad to worse for, for white because knight is badly placed and um, you get a very strong initiative by launching your a pawn. Maybe the bishop can come to a6. This position looks not great for, for white. So Jordan could have considered b5. Very interesting move. But I was looking this game live and I was understanding that this is something you would not do in a practical game. Why would you give up your g pawn that easily? He played here g6. But it's a weakening move. Now the bishop comes back to g5. That's where it wants to be. Now the bishop can no longer be chased away by any of uh, black's pawns. Black goes b5, white goes a3, and bishop b7. Both sides are trying to complete their development. King b1 is always a useful move to hide with your king on a somewhat safer square. But queen e1 played also making a lot of sense. The queen drops back one square overprotecting the knight, but mainly after rook c8, the bishop can be uh, brought into play. Comes to d3, that is a very important move. If you're careless, black may have even ideas with knight takes e4, and after knight takes e4, it is queen takes c2 with checkmate. Therefore, the bishop comes to d3, very understandable. And what is black going to do? Is black really going to castle kingside? We will get to see that in a minute. If you castle here, f4 is, is the idea and very soon f5 will be played. You get in touch with these pawns and the files will be opened. Looks very dangerous. Knight c5 instead was played in the game. Once again, various options. What to do? Are you going for the exchange of, uh, of pieces? First, king b1 was played and I like this move a lot. Maybe not an easy move to come up with yourself, but after knight takes b3, c takes b3, these double pawns are actually very nicely guarding your own king. It's better off on the uh, B file behind its pawns than on, uh, on the C file. And uh, very soon white is gonna launch an uh, attack by bringing up the, uh, the F pawn. If you capture on D3 the bishop, there is rook G takes D3. Now we see the advantage of having doubled the rooks in this way and various moments, there are possibilities to take on F6 followed by taking the pawn on D6. So. That's the main drawback of having that pawn not on g7, protecting that knight. In the game, Jordan decided to castle kingside, but now knight takes c5, excellent move. If you do recapture with the queen, which is the normal Sicilian move to uh, maintain some uh, play along the uh, c-file, white will consider 
strongly the move for F4. And uh, I think mainly F5 is on the agenda so that you try to justify the placement of that rook looking for a crushing attack against the king. But Jordan instead played here the move D takes uh, C5. Interesting move. Changing the structure, but now obviously there's no more pressure exerted by the queen and rook on that uh, C file. Idea is to go C4 very quickly, or maybe even play B4, trying to open the files. But first, it's White's turn, and White goes here for the move E5, attacking that knight on F6. That knight got to go away, and where should it go? Maybe G4 is the best square, so that at least the rook is temporarily blocked. Your putting pressure against the pawn on e5. Now after bishop e7, queen takes e7, the knight can be kicked away with f3. Knight doesn't have many squares apart from going back to h6. Looks very bad, but black still has some defenders. But objectively speaking, white should try to launch an attack. And the main weakness here is the pawn on g6. If you can play knight e2, intending knight to f4, massive pressure exerted by bishop, knight and rook, you do have uh, dangerous threats uh, very, uh, very soon. So that's maybe what, what could have been played. Jordan wanted to simplify, played here to move knight e5. Now minor pieces can be, uh, can be exchanged. Knight takes d5, bishop takes d5. Are you going to swap the bishops as well? Well, that is a possibility. There's no need to do so. You can uh, bring in your queen first. Let black uh, make the capture himself. If he does take with a bishop, it's queen takes uh, g5. And a lot of threats, including queen takes h5. The rook is pinning the g-pawn as well. So the g-pawn is not a good defender. And also bishop takes g6 ideas are looking very dangerous. White's pieces are approaching the black king. In the game, there followed the move c4. Attacking the bishop. Now, if the bishop goes away or, or it would offer the exchange of pieces, then White's attack will uh, slow down. That's not what you want to do. But here, Swidler is on fire. Goes for the move. Bishop takes g6. Removing an important defender after f takes g6. What else? Otherwise, you're just a piece, not a piece down, you're pulling down, but the attack is just crushing. So better capture the piece. Bishop takes e7. It's a forcing sequence. Queen takes um the the bishop and now it's rook takes g6 with check where is the king going well definitely not to h7 as it allows queen h6 with checkmate the black king cannot count on the support of its pawns any longer um in the game king h8 was played but a very important alternative we should should check as well is king f7 well in that case the queen comes in to h6 setting up the threat of rook g7 and winning the queen if you play rook g8 to uh, cover that square and offer the exchange of rooks, there is queen h7. And uh, after the king goes to the back rank, you can just take the rook and it's uh, either mate or just game over. Final attempt here is king e8 trying to run away. But now, fantastic shot here is rook takes d5, eliminating very important defender of the pawn on e6. After e takes d5, it's going to be rook e6. You're going to win the queen. Uh, so it will eventually be a position with uh, a queen versus two rooks. But are the rooks better? Not at all. Black's position is hopeless because of its king safety. Very soon the, the pawns will be launched as well. And white with a uh, powerful queen is able to give a number of checks, pick up the pawns. The black rooks are absolutely helpless. So Jordan didn't want that and uh, decided to play here to move king h8. If you go queen h6, maybe there is still queen h7. You don't want to initiate the exchange of queen. So more precise is the move rook h6 check. The king got to go back to the g-file. It played here uh, the move um, uh, king g7. And now very nice move. Rook takes h5. White has already three pawns for the piece. But Jordan resigned. Why he resigned here? That may look uh, premature, but his position is really bad. His king is wide open. Um, I mean, we will look at concrete lines, but if white has time, he can even consider playing rook d4, rook g4, bringing its final piece into the attack. 
Concretely, the king cannot escape back to the center. If the king would, let's say, be on the other side of the board, that would be great news for black. But there is rook h7, winning the queen, leading to, to a position with queen versus rook and bishop. That's game over. The critical line, in my opinion, is rook h8, offering the exchange of, um, of rooks. But queen g3 is, uh, is the key move. Now, if the king goes to f8, the rooks are disconnected, and that uh, allows rook takes h8. So the only move is king f7, and now queen to f4. This is another very nice idea. Where is this? Um, is the uh, is the king going? Once again, it will not go to e8 because of rook takes h8. If the king goes to g6, we have a rook to g5, forcing the king to go to the um, to the h file. And now, beautiful move here is uh, is rook takes d5, eliminating a defender. The point is that after e takes d5, you can drop back with your rook to g3. It's a discovered check. And after king to uh, to h5 or or even king h7, there is uh, queen f5. And now the pawn on e6 is no longer there guarding the f5 square. King h6 and it's checkmate on, uh, on g6. And also after king h5, it's queen g4, king h6. Queen g6 with checkmate. This is what happens when your king doesn't get the support from its uh, from its own pawns. Let's go back. We just looked at king to, to g6, but king g7, is that a better practical defensive attempt? Not really. There's also rook g5 forcing the king to go to the, to the h file. I mean, you can go to h6 or h7. It will basically come down to the same. There is rook takes d5. And also here, you're deflecting that e pawn it's not a good defender of the bishop after e takes d5 we do have the same motive as we have seen already queen f5 check king h6 and queen g6 is checkmate of course there were probably ways to prolong the battle for a few more moves but after rook takes h5 black's king is open and definitely he is going to lose its bishop for sure that le is leaving him behind in a uh, hopeless situation this is my favorite game of the round i hope you really enjoyed it as well learn something because that's why i created this channel just to bring you educational uh, content as well as the latest uh, most interesting uh, games we will soon see if jordan is able to bounce back and of course we keep an eye on the other games of the world cup as well see you soon again bye bye